Well, creator, the behavior of the collective youth definitely seems to be in favor of their Western man's invasion. Hey, we're here at uh, Writer's Dojo booth at Wardstock, and I'm talking with Sid Miller. Sid Miller is an Oregon poet. He's got two new books out, Nixon on the Piano and Dots Without Oregon, and also the uh, editor of uh, Burnside Review, Correct. founder and editor. Founder and editor. You use the phrase out of the way places. Mm -hmm. Was there a point, cause, and you mentioned a rut, so did you in your own way have to get out of your own way to, to bring this book? I mean, what was going on with, with the rut? Uh, well, I mean, this kind of taught me a, a new way to write. I was able to research. I was able to go to, you know, every place, all the poems in the book I, I visited, just how many places I spent a night, you know, many places I had meals there. I mean, I, you know, I got to walk around with my dog, my wife, uh, to see these places. So I was able to take notes, take pictures, then kind of step away from it, look at the notes, you know, find the imagery I wanted to use. I, di I didn't want the poems just to be uh, uh, lists of images, you know, yeah. something that anybody could go, anybody could go to Baker yeah. and write this, this, this down and then write a poem. I didn't want it to be with that. I wanted it to be, I wanted to use the imagery of these places combined with whatever was going on in my life and what I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. But, but, but having the research was a nice kind of way to kind of move myself in a different direction okay. and to bring in some ideas that maybe I hadn't explored before. Look at those poems that you were writing 10 years ago and um, I kind of track your own evolution and, and see where your voice, kind of see the thread where your, your voice still remains and kind of follow its own course, is that? Uh, yeah, you know, I, you know, I don't think it has changed that much, you know. I was a, I was a student of uh, Henry Carlyle at PSU when, when I first moved here and studied with him for a couple of years. And, you know, the thing that he would always say and the thing that has stuck with me is like, well, it was a great poem, you know, but it didn't break my heart. And in some respects, I'm always, uh, that's always my objective in every poem is to, uh, is to kind of break the heart. And, uh, you know, I guess it kind of breaks my heart in the end, too, which maybe isn't the best thing for my yeah, well-being. Like walking around like Jeff and <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I, I'd say that's the kind of the one constant in my work, you know. As an editor, then, um, the reviewer coming in, and things coming in for the for Burnside Review, are you looking for that? Like, are you, no, this poem is great, but it didn't break my heart? Is that like? Uh, it, uh, it's certainly uh, my co-editor, Bill Bogart, you know, we, we studied with Henry together, and we took on kind of a lot of the same uh, traits and uh, what we look for and what we want in our own work, and I think that's something we share, you know. We also say we also like to kind of find beauty and like unexpected places you know we don't publish much pastoral work you know we don't you know we, we know that you know an eagle soaring you know is, is, has a beauty innate beauty but that's easily recognizable what we're looking for is something you know that, that on first glance you might not see but a closer examination is there so when you stepped away and we're, do, we're taking your trips through Oregon for uh, the completion of dot to dot was it easy to sort of remove yourself from the, the rest of your you know normal life or other uh, other responsibilities? No, I mean, that never goes away. Yeah. I mean, it's all one. You know, I'm reading poems just every day. You know, we're getting submissions and submissions and submissions every day. There's always books, you know, journals to send out, chat books to read. I mean, that's just become part of who I am. And uh, you know, we have we have a staff of about ten to twenty people, depending on the year, that do everything from read poems to do the covers, but 98% uh, of the day-to-day -day operations is done by me. And, you know, where's, where's Burnside with regards to bringing people in to an online audience versus just, you know, continuing to put in the review out there? Uh, you know, we're one of the... I mean, for an independent journal, you know, we're one of the last remaining, uh, you know, that especially has been around for as long as we have. Yeah. You see a lot of independents come and go within a few issues, and yeah. they realize they can't sustain it, that the money is not there, or it's too much time. Mo I'd say 90% of the new journals that come out, the independent journals, are online journals. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's, 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 it's kind of strange. Uh, if you get something published online, a lot more people are going to read it than 
than in a print that's journal. True. That's um, true. But there's just something that's so satisfying about being able to wrap your hands around, mm. being able to carry it in your bar, to you know, in your back pocket yeah. to the bar, and yeah. sit there and have a whiskey and read it, or yeah. go to the coffee shop, or go to the beach and read it. Um, you know, and the aesthetic for us is very important. You know, we spend a lot of time. We have a great uh, Regina Godfrey's there. Our uh, does our uh, graphic design. Mm -hmm. And the aesthetic is so important to us, you know, and to our success, I think it has been very important to us. And I mean, if we couldn't do it in print, we wouldn't want to do it at okay. all. So now these two books have come out, 2009 is a banner year. <laughs> are you sitting back and, and uh, waiting for the next idea to come, or, or are you kind of just, you got your, your left handed on, on the uh, page? Uh, no, well, I, I just kind of finished up a chapbook size. Um, collection of poems, uh, prose poems. I, was, I spent a year living in Los Angeles about a year ago and was living next to the LA County Art Museum and uh, had a pass there and was spending every day there. So I did about 16 poems based on different works at the LA County Art Museum. Those are, poems are done. I'm kind of just sitting back on those for a little bit. Um, and now I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things, just trying to go back to where I was 10 years ago where I was sitting down every morning and mm -hmm. giving myself you know some time to write and seeing just what comes yeah. out because I've been working within with within projects in mind for three years and that's kind of put everything else on the back burner so now I'm just trying to see kind of what comes out and is, do you do you find where uh, to have a theme is that um, does that kind of help you move move through your work or are you okay in a, in a place where you're, you're just writing? I guess that's kind of what I have to find out now, yeah. you know. Uh, for a while, the, the idea of writing within this framework uh, really pushed me and uh, really excited me and, and it seemed to help me produce some work that I'm proud of um, and kind of steer me in a direction. And now that I don't have that, I, I'm not working with a specific project in mind, um, it feels a little uncertain, and, and I don't have a strong of idea of what I want to do, but, you know, the book just came out, and yeah. time will kind of tell in what direction I go. But, but I do like, I, I did very much like the idea of working with a project in mind, and I, uh, I could probably say that at some point I'll definitely do that again, you know, a few ideas sure. kind of swimming around in my head. Is chapbook going to be... Is that out now? I, no, I haven't even sent that out. Okay. I'm just kind of uh, holding on to that okay. for a while. But so you have gotten to a place where two plus books, I mean, that's that's really a, a remarkable accomplishment. Uh, yeah. I know you're not one to pat yourself on the back uh, about it. But... Uh, yeah, no, uh, I guess it's a little too close right now, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's all kind of new. No, it, it is uh, what that, if I want to do anything, or what can I do with that? You know, I, I've never really been one to teach. I'm not in the academic world. You know, Burnside Review is completely independent of that. So, uh, I mean, that's kind of 90% of the people, you know, it's okay, I got a book, now I got another book. Well, now I could go and get, you know, a job, yeah. you know, become a professor. I, I, I don't really see that it's being my working. life. Okay. Um, and I don't, you know, the books don't necessarily help you get the next book necessarily. You know, the work has to do that on its yeah. own. So, um, it's nice to have and I'm proud of having it, you know, but I, I, I don't know that that propels me into anything else okay. necessarily, like it like it does for some other people. Yeah, I guess, it, like like you said, the work has to do it on your own, and so it's mm -hmm. just about going back to the page on a, on a daily yeah, basis. Yeah, you know, kind of keep surprising yourself and uh, keep being, uh, you know, nothing better than when, when a line or a poem comes out that you didn't know where it comes from. and. And oftentimes that'll move you to the next thing, you know, yeah. and uh, like kind of with the, the pieces from the, um, that L.A. County Art Museum. I, the first one I did was, I'd never written a prose poem. The first one I did uh, based on a, um, a Basquiat poem, uh, it just came out as a prose poem and then I decided, you know, I liked it so much that I was like, not, I, I like the process of writing in that form so much I decided, well, maybe I'll do the whole collection like that. And so those kind of surprises are nice and, yeah. you know, uh, just being open to uh, whatever comes. Yeah, absolutely. Surprise yourself and break your heart. <laughs> Whenever I can. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Congratulations. Well, Enjoy so. your reading and uh, thanks for being at the Dojo's booth. I appreciate it. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you.